Hi beautiful, today I'm here sort of kind of to eat my words because I have said in the past that I was no longer interested in Too Faced palettes like that and they released a new palette, it is called the Better Than Chocolate palette and I couldn't skip it this time, okay? I have skipped the last several Too Faced palettes, a lot of them kind of look the same to me, especially the holiday ones, they're all always like the ginger palette, the caramel palette sort of thing, they kind of all look the same, but this Better Than Chocolate chocolate palette did pique my interest. It is probably still going to be basic, but I'm here to test it out today and to tell you what I think of it because for some reason I was attracted to it, so I figured we should explore that attraction. In today's video I'm going to be showing you swatches, I'm going to be doing three looks, and we are going to talk about whether or not Too Faced is having a comeback. Let me go ahead and get this palette out of the box. The packaging is really, really beautiful. It looks very succulent. I kind of want to take a bite out of it. <laughs> and let's open it up. I have not seen it yet in person. It is, in fact, beautiful so far. What it looks like to me is that I'm not going to really have to regret this decision and I mean it looks even better in person I promise you. Do we already have each and every one of these shades in our collections already? That depends on your palette collection. I know I probably do have all of these shades already in my collection but they do still look beautiful and I have not tried Too Faced eyeshadow formulas in a minute. It's been years. I think the only Too Faced palette I currently have is the Peach palette by Too Faced and that was like six to seven years ago that it launched I feel like because it was before I lived here. It's been a while. Let's just go ahead and begin these swatches. Here is the color Milk It. Then we have the color Buttercream which is a beautiful transition matte. Gold Digger. Skinny Dipped. Ooh, this is rich. I love it. Here I have the shade Ooey Gooey. <laughs> Midnight Snack. This one's a little dusty. Hold on, I'm trying to blend it in. There we go. Reality Shock. C-H-O-C. <laughs> Bitter Half. The mattes are smooth, but I think they have kind of like a buildable consistency to them. They're not like pure of pigment right away. You have to kind of build them up just from what I've seen on the swatches so far. Let's keep going. This is shade um, The Dessert. This one's beautiful. Then we have Sugar Rush, which is a lighter, much less pigmented type of shimmer. Cake My Day. This is a more pigmented matte than I've seen so far. And this one is called Bitter Me. Bitter Me was nice and pigmented too. Starting with the last row, this color is called Lick the Bowl. Then we have Bless Your Tarts. I'm kind of disappointed on this blue shade. It looks so much richer on the pan. This one here is called Nice Buns. What the Fudge. Brownie Points. And Sex and Candy. All right, so here's the shot. These are all of the colors from this palette swatched. I feel like the quality of these is sort of what I was expecting. It can't compete with like a Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona, Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow quality. However, all of the swatches came out pretty decent and I'm sure that they will perform well on the eyes. I feel like the main factor that I have to pay attention to is the amount of fallout that this palette might have. That I'm a little bit worried about. <laughs> This Better Than Chocolate eyeshadow palette is now available at Sephora and the Too Faced website and it retails for $54. And then under description it says that these eyeshadows are cocoa powder infused. Let's go ahead and do an eye look and we'll see how the shadows perform. I just remember that Too Faced eyeshadow palettes used to have scents and this has a really nice natural smelling scent of cocoa. So to begin, the first thing I'm going to do is use the color Bite Me right here. This is a refer number 15 brush, which is my fluffy brush of preference. And I'm going to use that shade as my transition color all throughout the crease of my eye. 
and the outer V. So I'm just packing it on and then just doing back and forth motions to blend it out. And this shade is like a beige with a beautiful rosy undertone. It translates beautiful on the skin. Nice and blendable. Nothing bad to say about it. I did go back a couple of times to build it up and it looks really pretty. So switching to a reference number one, which is a more pinch type of blending brush, I'm using the color Cake My Day, which is a mid-tone chocolatey brown and I'm building up the outer V of my eye with it, blending it into the color Bite Me right here. And I'm having zero issues when it comes to blendability or pigmentation so far. Things are looking really beautiful. I wanna smoke things up a little bit more, so I'm going to grab the color Brownie Points with a refer number one, and I'm going to add that color to the outer corner of my eyelid, packing it in place first, just like this. Next, I'm going to start blending it in place by doing little back and forth motions over the area, and finally, I'm going to blend it into the previous shades by doing little circles around the edge. And now it looks a little bit more smoky and sultry, just like this. For the center of my eyelid, I want to use the color Reality Shock right here. And I'm going to apply it with a refer number two brush, which is a wide flat brush, starting from the center of the eyelid and into the outer corner shade so that it gives us a nice transition into these dark matte shades back here. And I'm just patting it in place where I want it. And I want to add one of these pops of colors to my eye look today. So I'm grabbing the color Sugar Rush right here. This is a refer number 28 brush, hopefully. It picks up a lot of product and hopefully it shows up nicely <laughs> because I want to use it on the inner half of my eyelid. I went back for a little bit more. I'm just building it up dry and to be honest with you, dry, it is not really giving me the intensity that I would want. That is unacceptable right there. I am spoiled by other brands of eyeshadows and this Purple shade is not doing it for me. It's been so long since I've had to reach for a setting spray to make an eyeshadow show up better that at this point I feel like it's unacceptable that I have to do that, but I'll do it. <laughs> so long story short, I am not a big fan of that shade Sugar Rush because I had to wet it in order to get it to look intense and even. So with a wet brush, I'm putting it all throughout the inner half of my eyelid. And back with my ref for number two and the color Reality Shock. I'm going over it a little bit to blend these two shades into one another. And the color Reality Shock, I really did not have an issue with that at all whatsoever. It looks beautiful. It's nice and pigmented. You can see that it's a beautiful foiled shimmer shade. But this light purpley shade called Sugar Rush is trash in comparison. I just went ahead and finished up this eye and this right here is the top of my eye look. So far I do really like this end result but I was very clearly disappointed by that inner shade right there. Let's go ahead and finish up the look. I'm going to do a lilac eyeliner in my waterline. This one is from Glossier and the shade is Muse. Here's the eyeliner applied. I think I overdid it a little bit. I can see my lashes under my eyes right now. It's kind of weird because they're purple. <laughs> With a refer number three brush, I'm going back to my smoky color down here and I'm going to use it on the outer third of my under eye to smoke things out underneath my eye. And then with my refer number 13, back to the color Bite Me here. And I am going to smoke everything out. Just doing back and forth motions with my blending brush. I can definitely see where I got some fallout underneath my eyes. But honestly, it's not terrible. I got a lot more under this eye than this one for sure. So I might have been a little bit careless myself right here. But the fallout could have definitely been worse. I've tried much worse for sure. I would still recommend doing your eyes before you do the rest of your makeup though so that you have a really nice clean base afterwards. Let me go ahead and put on some mascara and I'll be back to show you the final first look. Back with mascara on and this right here is the final first look with this Better Than Chocolate palette by Too Faced. I already have some thoughts, but I want to really test this palette out. I'm going to use 
more of the shades in here in looks two and three and then at the end of the video I'll tell you exactly what I think of this palette whether Too Faced is making a compact or not and if I think it's worth it so let's go ahead and move on to look number two I'm starting the second look with the color bitter half on my crease and I'm using my refer number 15 brush to blend it. I did prime my eyelids with the Jaclyn Cosmetics eyeshadow primer. And the reason I want to go ahead and do multiple looks with this palette is just in case anyone's interested. But also because I want to test as many of the shades as possible. This palette has 18 shades total. So it's hard to really get a grasp as to how they all perform with just one look. With my red for number one and the color Lick the Bowl, I'm going to start intensifying the outer V of the eye. Another thing I noticed right away when it comes to this palette is not just that the shades are very, very common, but there's a lot of repeated shades even within the palette itself. I want to intensify things a little bit more with the color Lick the Bowl and blending it into my crease. You know what? Let's do a halo eye. I'm going to use that shade on the inner part of the eyelid as well, inner corner here, and blending it into the crease. And with the color Better Half, which is an intense brown, I'm going to intensify things even further. Still on the outer and inner corners of my eye. I got the blend that I wanted, and now in the center, I want to use the color Bless Your Tart. So with my finger, I'm just going to press it over the center of my eyelid, grabbing a little bit more, and this color is lackluster when it comes to pigmentation. I'm really rubbing my finger in the pan and patting it on my eyelid, but I'm not really getting the intensity that I wish to be getting from it. I'm using a brush now to see if I can intensify it further with a brush. I feel like the brush is actually working better than my finger patting it still all over the center of the eyelid. And with the color Milk It, I'm going to intensify my inner corner and I want to combine it with the blue to see if we can make it stand out a little more. So I'm adding Milk It to the center of my eyelid. I kind of sort of give up. This right here is the top of look number two. As you can see, I have a lot of fallout. I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to put some makeup on my face and I'll be right back to finish up this look. Back with some makeup on and I wanted to kind of emphasize that blue a little bit more so I went ahead and used a blue eyeliner in my waterline. This one is from Glossier in the shade La Pisse. For the under eye I'm going to use the color Better Half and I'm going to with a rougher number three smudge it all underneath my lower lash line intensifying everything down here and connecting it at the end. And then with the color Butter Cream on a rougher number 13 I'm going to smoke it all out, just like this. And I'm just going to add a little bit more milk to my inner corner with a rougher number 28. Okay, so take a look. This right here is the final second look with this palette. I'm going to put on some mascara and I'll be back to show you the final results. Back with mascara on, this right here is the finished second look with this palette. So take a look right there. We do still have some more shades to test. So let's move on to look number three. Let's use some more of the shades we still have to test out on look number three. So I'm going to start it using the color Nice Buns, which is a little bit of a warmer mid-tone brown type of a shade. And I'm going to spread it and blend it all throughout the crease of my eye here. Blendy, blendy, back and forth, outer V and all the way in. I got a really pretty blend on that color. Let's darken it up a bit. I'm using the color Midnight Snack on the outer V of my eye. With the refer number one brush, I'm just patting it in place there. And then I'm going to start to diffuse any edges by doing little circles around it, just like this. Next, I'm going to use the color Sex and Candy on a refer number two, and I'm going to tap it right here from the center out of the eyelid into the outer V shade. I don't have many complaints about the shades I've used for this look so far. I'm going to use the color Gold Digger on the inner half of the eyelid. This might not be a combination of colors that I usually do, but I'm kind of scrambling around for all of the colors that I want to test out that I haven't tested out yet on this last look. Overall though, it's not an ugly look. 
I feel like it's coming out okay. A little bit more of the green shade all throughout the center of the eye. And here you have the top of the third look. Let me clean up the little bit of fallout I had, put on some makeup and I'll be back and we'll finish it up. Back with makeup on and for this look I wanted to intensify the green so I added a green eyeliner to my waterline. This one is in the color Fresco also from Glossier. And to finish up this look, I'm going to start with the color Midnight Snack. And I'm going to add it to the outer half of my lower lash line, connecting it right here at the end. And then with the shade Nice Buns on a refer number 13, we are going to blend it all out, back and forth, until we have a nice even blend, no harsh lines underneath the eye. Lastly, for the inner corner, I'm going to finish things up with Milk It. And this is a refer number 26 brush. So take a look, this is the finished third look right here. Let me put on some mascara and I'll be back to show you the final result. Back with mascara on and this is the final third look right here. It actually came out really nice. I was talking about how I selected a random assortment of colors, which is kind of true, but I honestly kind of dig it. I'm definitely not upset at this look. Let's just go ahead and get to my final thoughts on this palette. First of all, my friend Andrea came yesterday and she saw it and she said it looked like when a brand copies a palette, like the outside of it looks like somebody copied the actual Too Faced chocolate palette. And after she said that, now I can't unsee it. I thought the packaging was cute at first. I do still think it's cute, but if you think about like the original look of the Too Faced chocolate palette, this does look like if they are duping themselves, doesn't it? <laughs> Anyways, all in all, I think I was able to create some beautiful looks with this palette, but I was honestly not impressed with the formulation. I feel like um, the makeup industry in general has advanced a lot as far as like formula qualities and all of that throughout the past few years and Too Faced just seems to have stuck to that original formula that they had I don't know, six, seven years ago that was popular then. But I feel like right now that formula might just not be enough, especially because they are a high-end makeup brand and this palette is over $50 and it has ColourPop quality in my opinion. So obviously I would rather go for the cheaper option than spending the money on this palette. And then the other thing is the repeated shades. Like this shade right here it looks pretty much the same as this one here. Take a look, see? extremely close to one another when you put these on your eyes you can barely tell the difference especially if you intensify this one i felt the same about this shade and this one they're both amazing transition shade slightly different undertones but again once you put them on your eyes the difference is not this noticeable. So I definitely feel that for a palette that has 18 different shades, there isn't that much variation in the color story is kind of repetitive. And my biggest disappointment was probably the fact that they're pops of color which I was so excited about because it is truly what made this palette kind of different like this blue shade or this purple shade right here the gold the green etc those shades definitely let me down especially when it came to this blue shade even the color milk it right here this white shade really not as pigmented as I was expecting at all. So my conclusion is that Too Faced is not making a comeback. I let them persuade me to buy this palette and I don't regret it but only because I can use it to make a video and tell you about it. Otherwise if it was for my personal use I would regret this purchase because there's just nothing special about it. So those are my final thoughts and I'm disappointed because when I first opened it I'm like this palette is so beautiful. I'm about to get some spectacular looks out of it, but then it was just nothing special, especially like the shimmer shades. Nothing special. This is all I have for today's video. If you guys liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up before you leave. If you have yet to subscribe to my channel, please don't leave without subscribing. I love you so, so much. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye.